Hi hey guys, what is up? It's Kat here. Thank you so much for coming back and joining me today as we continue on with our Legend of Korra adventure with book two, episodes four through six. Due to my poor planning skills, we left off on an un unplanned cliffhanger last time. I accidentally split up the episodes in the middle of a two episode arc, Civil Wars, as the tension rises with Tonrock and Unalak. Getting on a little bit of a uh, power trip here and where we left off, he is arrested He's in the process of arresting Korra's mother and father. So I'm sure this is going to be quite the trial for her, at least, and definitely put her to the test. You know, she's been having to act as a mediator. Her uncle is very much love bombing her in order to manipulate her, uh, in my opinion. I think he is definitely in the process of trying to give her and like reassure her of her own free will and her own decision making. He's still manipulative enough to twist her and she is not acting on her own accord. Her, her uncle is kind of puppeteering her to seemingly act as this neutral middleman. You know, he's very much praising her and reminding her of what it means to have the title of the Avatar and the authority that she possesses. He has kind of embarked on being the mediator as her uncle kind of assigned her. You know, he kind of told her that she had no choice. I still think he's very much twisting her uh, to, to work in his, his favor. So uh, we'll see, you know, I, I don't know. We'll see if she has a realization or at least we're retaliates a little bit and snaps out of that and does embrace the fact that she's the avatar. You know, she's very much been a mouthpiece for him, but I'm sure that the arrest of her parents, however, is going to have some repercussions and perhaps unleash a full-fledged retaliation. You know, it was very much a little fledgling rebellion that attempted to kidnap and possibly assassinate her uncle, but I think now this is going to just throw more fuel into that fire. So without further ado, we left off on a cliffhanger. We're going to right our wrongs today. Let's get into it. Episode 4, Civil Wars, Part 2. Oh dang, he really went through with it, huh? You're making a mistake. I can't believe you're doing this to your own family. I've appointed Judge Hota to oversee the trial. My parents had nothing to do with the men who attacked you. So we should have nothing to worry about. Mm, what a beautiful shot, my goodness. <laughs> Please search for Varric. Our father wishes him to stand the trial. Along with our aunt and uncle. Cora's parents were arrested? Desna, let us continue our search elsewhere. Honesty is for fools, kid. Varric? <laughs> my god, he's hiding in the platypus bear. Where are you? Inside Ping Ping! <laughs> I got a little something for you around that. Ew! Oh, that was quick. Oh, no, that was really quick. Oh. <laughs> I just realized, I think I've been getting the daughters mixed up. It's Janora who is having the spiritual sixth sense, and Iki just ran off. Give all the money to some guys over there. I told them to take care of it. This trial will now come to order. I was asleep in my chambers. The next thing I remember was waking up in the snow after Avatar Korra had saved me. Eric tried to incite a civil war. Is that true? And were these men present at that meeting? Objection! Quiet down out there. Where did the meeting happen? My parents' house. Who led this meeting? My parents are innocent! I've heard all I need to. Uh, he got them on a technicality, like on paper. Hey there, Eska. I'm starting to feel like this spark is fading. A great chasm has formed between us. Nothing that is except marriage. Ah! 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 Why did that just turn into a horror movie for a second? Senna, please step forward. Oh no. Innocent. Oh. That ain't gonna be so lucky though. You are all found guilty. The punishment for this crime is death. What? Huh? What the flip? What the flip? Alright, betray your uncle, Cora. Come on. Come on. You take their lives and I'll take yours. Cora. Yeah, girl. But I must ask you to reconsider. I feel like this is all just a manipulative Cora, trick though. He's the one who arrested them in the first place, and now he's trying to paint himself as, like, the merciful, like, oh, wait, change my mind. 
I don't trust him. He's. I don't think his heart. He's, his intentions aren't good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the baby bison. All right, so Iki ran off, but Janora is the one who is having like the mystical sixth sense. I kind of want her to. Come on. <laughs> I'm a bad influence right now. I hate feeling so helpless. I know. Oh, we can do a little threatening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a little intimidation. Oh. With a little intimidation. I'm sorry I didn't turn out to be an airbender like you hoped. But oh. I tried my best to keep the world safe. Of course he'd be proud of you, Boomy. Why did that make me want to cry? Unalak hired the barbarians to attack their tribe, knowing my dad would go after them. What a sneaky It was a setup. I need your help. If you do this, there's no going back. Unleash the war girl, let's go. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! I don't even want to know. Has she decided we should get married? Sorry. Let's talk plan. All this time I've been giving her uncle the benefit of the doubt. He's so much far further gone. Ooh, she kept her glove. Let's go. You'll never see your father again. Headed to the northern tribe. He'll serve out his sentence there. Remember who you are. As Shut up! Are don't talk to her. Don't talk to her. Yes, they're bent. Oh, flip. Let's go. Let's go, girls. That's one way to do it. Okay. Okay. She's going a little bit ham. Let's go. Are we gonna see Iroh again? I started a civil war. Exactly. Now Esk and I are officially broken up. Uh, oh, oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. That was so terrifying. Why does every scene with her turn into a horror film? 
Well, I am glad that Cora was able to see it through her uncle's... Ah, he's... Mm. I, there's not a slimy enough word to describe him. Sniveling, sleazy, like he is. I guess that it's a testament to the way that the, they've established his, his character and, you know, presented him from the beginning, giving all these opportunities. I was manipulated with Cora. Oh my frick. I fell for it too, because here I freaking was every freaking turn, trying to find ways to see through and giving him the benefit of the doubt. And I think I said how many times? Too many, clearly, that I didn't think he had bad intentions, but he clearly does. Frick, I fell for it. I freaking fell for it. Not as smart as I thought I was. But hey, testament to the writers. <laughs> Once again, uh, I feel like they, they do a great job because there I was, you know, during his first appearance saying, I don't think he's going to become a full-fledged villain because he's family as well. But they were like, mm -hmm. You thought mm, that makes th that just makes things worse. He's so he's so infuriating at this point, but it's like he is family. So what are they gonna do? And now he's gonna <laughs> unleash his horrific twin children upon everybody. Like, ooh. and clearly I'm assuming you yeah, know he was enlisting Cora's help to unlock the portal. But I guess that was all just a uh, misdirection as well. And all along he could have been doing it himself. He claimed to have all of this knowledge about the avatar and her role spiritually as the mediator with the spirit world did he even need her because like what is corn she was just getting all her information from him he was telling her all these things about oh yeah this is your duty this is your responsibility and it was all kind of coming as news to her oh this is why we need tenzin this is why we need tenzin she was going to go on this journey with tenzin to learn about her spiritual responsibilities so she's just been getting all her information from her uncle this time and he's feeding her those i think now is that a lie that he, he needed her granted she did have to tap into the avatar state in order to successfully unlock the portal but that's because she didn't know how to handle the spirits i mean her uncle clearly has some sort of you know he has that capability that he can tame and ward off the spirits all this stuff though about unleashing a spiritual war like i'm beginning to think that's a lie i don't know but i'm starting to think confidently that sh she didn't need to go all the way to the south pole to unlock that portal i think that was totally just bait in order to gain favor with her and bol bolster her up and give her this sense of confidence that nobody else has instilled in her so you know so much of her self-worth and pride was rooted in her uncle here which made it just so much easier for him to twist her around and manipulate her so that's why i was being a bad influence though and egging Cora on I wanted to see her you know go ham because we kind of have yet to see her it's interesting they presented her they presented her out of the gate in this season in the very first episode she has all of this newfound confidence self-assurance and just you know the sense of pride that totally she was lacking in season one you know she was the antithesis of confident and very much was questioning everything and wasn't afraid to admit fear and vulnerability like that was a lot of the personal journey for her so coming into this season they established the a complete opposite, just total end of the spectrum, emphasizing to an extreme that she has a lot more faith in herself and is more self-assured. And so that was kind of like dampened by her uncle. He was seemingly giving her this confidence, but it was all as just a ruse to, to twist her around and make her his puppet, his mouthpiece. So to see her reclaim that sense of confidence that she clearly had at the beginning of the season, but to do it, you know, on her own accord in the realization that she was being manipulated and twisted around by him. Just loved it. I loved it. I kind of was rooting for it. I was like, go ham, girl. You have this confidence now. Let's see you use it. Let's see you tap into it. But it's also a slippery slope because she is still young and still clearly, you know, everything that she seemingly learned about her authority and her sense of power and role in situations like this has been fed to her from her uncle who's clearly lying to her so you know how does she navigate a situation like this and still maintain public favor when she does have to go a little bit ham and go a little bit hardcore even though yes she has her father you know i don't think he was wrong to advise her not to do anything rash because it could just escalate things so curious if we'll see repercussions as kind of like a learning curve for her to i don't know highlight that it's going to be a challenge to navigate situations like this going forward for the entirety of her career as Avatar. All right, without further ado, let's get into it with episode five. All right, here we go. Episode five, Peacekeepers. Yes, Lynn! Let's 
go. I've been missing her. Thanks for starting a war. I didn't start a Same as always. <laughs> There's going to be a Southern Water Tribe peace march tonight. The people of the South need to see that the Avatar is on their side in the fight. Great. That should calm them down. <laughs> she hasn't changed. You at least try to seem neutral. I'm not neutral. Julie's already scheduled a meeting for us with President Ryko tomorrow. I gotta go to work. So, uh, what should I be doing? Figure something out. Come on! Oh god. <laughs> Same. Go after the Avatar. She's the only one who can open the Northern Spirit Portal. But I told Korra what I thought she needed to hear. Also, it was a lie. He does need Korra. He is unleashing his demonic children. Oh god. All over. Good. Classic over rewarding. <laughs> Command respect. How would you like your old dad to teach you how to be a master trainer? He's so cute! I love him so much! Interesting though, I wasn't expecting that uh, the war in the tribes would extend down here, I guess. What? Oh. Ah! Yo, is that Sokka statue with his boomerang? Oh, 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 frick! I saw a firebender running away from the blast. The North might not be responsible for this. Who else would it be? Look! It's falling! Oh. Getting the praise he deserves. <laughs> I hope President Ryko listens to us. I was a big contributor to his election campaign. Hello, Mr. President. Just a second. Keep smiling. Oh. Unalak's troops have invaded the South. I don't think it's the Republic's place to interfere with internal water tribe matters. The Republic is already involved in this conflict. The North attacked our cultural center. Who else would it be but the Northerners? I'm trying to save my tribe, and you're taking pictures. Sending troops is not something I can do. Now, I'm sorry. My mind is made up. And it'll be on your head for doing nothing about it. Mm. Is she going a little too hardcore? You can't just tell those people to go fight a battle at the South Pole that has nothing to do with them. I'm trying to get troops to the South. What are you doing? I'm just trying to save the world. Well, you wouldn't have to if you didn't keep messing it up. I don't think they're going to last much longer. Like at least there's no animosity between the two of them. Wait, what the? Oh, jeez. Idea storm. Get the supplies. Oh my god. Let's go! You'll be making money for your company and you'll be helping to defeat Urala. It's true. It's dangerous on the seas right now, but I'm willing to try if you are. I don't understand why it's so hard to get Republic City to support the South. I'm already working on that. I had a film crew documenting the entire Northern invasion. <sighs> ah! Our superstar Bolin here, playing a Southern Water Tribe hero. Not Tuck! Hero of the South! Man, you should have seen Barrett today. That guy is a genius. Aura to get General Iroh to fight Unala. What? That's a terrible idea. I just don't buy that the Northern Water Tribe was behind it. Wait a second. That's him. That's the guy that attacked the center. Mm, yeah, now that Mongo works for the police, he wants to do things by the book, I'm sure. It's gonna clash with Korra wanting to go off the rails. <laughs> He's so freaking cute. Oh, subtext. If you don't get me results soon, you're going to find someone who can. This is the guy I saw sneaking out of the building right before the explosions. Did you learn anything about that remote control I found at the scene? It was a northern water tribe, okay? I've heard good things about you, and you're dating the Avatar, right? Yes, sir. You wouldn't happen to know if they're plotting anything that might compromise the security of Republic City? Uh. You're a man of the law before anything else. Yes, sir. 
There's something you should know. Rats. Ah, oh, their toad's breaking up. This relationship is not gonna last long. R.I.P. It was fun while it lasted. Let's go! Needs military support before Unalak wipes them out completely. Let's say we were to accidentally run into a hostile northern blockade. Swapping old war stories. If a single vessel leaves this harbor without my say-so, you'll be court-martialed. Do you know who you're talking to? That is the descendant of Zuko. Don't go behind my back again. My hands are officially tied. But you should talk to the Fire Lord. My mother and grandfather have always been good friends of the Avatar. Let's talk to the Fire Lord. Oh my god. This reminds me of like all the wild mocking Jay promo in the Hunger Games. I need a boat. What happened with General Iroh? President Ryko showed up. Someone must have tipped him off. No one knew about it except for us and Oh frick. And Mako. There's no way Mako would have told. Oh god, oh god, this is about to be so bad. This is gonna get ugly. Well done, Milo. I knew you could learn to drink pokey. Not just pokey. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. Why don't you and Pokey just have fun and play? Thanks, Dad. Oh my god, I love him. Uh oh god. The president of the Republic asked me a direct question. Enough! Look, I have a job to do. I have a job to do too. You're always standing in the way of me getting it done. Maybe there's no room for our relationship. Rip. That was so short-lived. What the flame you happened here? <laughs> I broke up with the Avatar. You should have seen Air Temple Island after Tenzin broke up with me. <laughs> oh flip. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so horrifying. Oh my god. Uh, oh my oh my oh. Yeah, go go ham on them, girl. Go ham. Get them. What the Oh, I forgot about this. Uh, you're about to get eaten by spirit. Oh my god. Ow. Oh god. Okay, here we go. Uh -huh. Oh no. Oh frick. gonna leave us off in the belly of the beast oh my god oh wow ah, whoa flip uh, what the what the what where are we going i oh my god we, what the what the what okay i'm actually i'm not scared i'm so freaking excited for what's gonna happen next what's this gonna lead to are we gonna go into like some spirit world journey i want her to so bad i don't think she's just gobbled up by that thing i think she i think we're going we're going on a trip we're going on a trip <laughs> I hope we are. I hope I'm not just getting my own hopes up, but I swear this is this has got to lead to something. It has to because she has to have her own spiritual education, spiritual enlightenment that hasn't just been what Unalak has been feeding her. I hope. I hope because I, I feel like everything that he is saying is a lie about why the spirits are acting up. I mean, everything he does is a lie, is a trick, is some sort of diversion from what's actually like true. Like, yeah, granted, I, I do think there's a reason the spirits are acting up, but he's been blaming it all on her father. And like, I don't think that's that can't be he clearly has it out for Cora's dad uh I, that that can't be the case that that's got to be you know a lie especially since following the incident that led to his banishment although we've learned that that was wrongful but anyway even though even if it was contrived Cora's father totally you know severed any kind of just has left the spirits be and that was his advice to Cora this entire time wait frick her dad's been right this whole time his advice to her was to you know don't make the same mistakes that I did. It's better to l let them be. And like, yeah, I agree a little bit. Like, her, I don't think her uncle's wrong in acknowledging that yeah, the Avatar is the median between their world and the spirit world. But her father was advising her, you know, it's not something to be trifled with. So that's why he's kind of just led a life, you know, not dabbling in the spirits and not kind of tampering with that stuff. Obviously, because he learned a brutal lesson and learned of the repercussions that can result uh, when you mingle with the spirit. Spirits, but perhaps, you know, he's just playing it safe, you know, whether you mingle positively or negatively, just let the spirits be. Just respect them. So, all this time, you know, we've been led to believe by Unalak that 
the spirits are acting up because they've been neglected, because her father and their tribe have severed, you know, any sort of connection, you know, coexistence with the spirits, but I don't think that's true, and I think her dad's being right all along, and Unalak, I think everything he's doing right now, unlocking the portal, this next portal that he's, he's trying to unlock, I think it's tampering with the spirit world, and that's not what they want. Maybe that, I think that's, I think that's, 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 that's what's happening here. Here's Unalog this entire time, kind of appointing himself as the most knowledgeable about what the spirits want. But perhaps this is all, all of this is because they just don't want to be messed with. <laughs> They're like, can you stop unlocking our doors, please? So I don't know, I don't know. Everything we've learned about the spirits seemingly has been from him, but clearly we can't trust anything he says. So I'm hoping that this results in some sort of spiritual awakening, some sort of journey where Korra can learn firsthand, head on, like what? I, hopefully, I hope I'm not like blowing this out of proportion and that she is in just the belly of whatever this thing is being all gobbled up. And she's definitely, you know, she's definitely blinded by her family, her personal bias, you know, her care for her family and her tribe. You know, she does have like her blinders on and her tunnel vision. She's not exactly thinking rationally, you know, as much as it is kind of, yeah, when you frame it as Mako betrayed her, like sure, technically, but he's he's right. He's not in the wrong and it's from a place of care. He doesn't want her just doing things willy nilly, going completely off the rails and, you know, accruing enemies. <laughs> like it's in best interest for her and wanting to make sure she doesn't get herself in trouble. So, you know, whenever Aang would have spiritual awakenings, I feel like they would come to him in times when he was feeling animosity or he was feeling the most lost and confused and needed guidance. You know, Korra doesn't have Tenzin anymore. Her uncle, who she seemingly, you know, put all this weight on that he was gonna offer her guidance, just fed her lies, led her astray. She's really lacking a lot of guidance right now. And she is just feeling lots of violence and animosity and is going off the rails a little bit so I feel like she needs something spiritual to, to really ground her to really steer her back not even just back in the right direction but just back into what's what's real like what's really what's really going on at hand here with the spirits because again I just think I think Unalak is wrong I don't think he even knows I think he's the one who's causing all of this rift, everything that's happening with the spirits acting up, you know, I think her dad is more so in the right, just let them be. Meanwhile, every element of Unalak's plan has been to bother them, you know, <laughs> awaken the spirits. But I feel like now's a good time. Now would be the perfect time for Korra to have some sort of, some sort of spirit world journey. Uh, also, her cousins are just terrifying, completely unrelated, but they are so freaking scary, my God. On another note, unrelated, but real quick, I mean, we haven't really dabbled much, much into the new president here, and we've only really seen him through the same lens as Korra. Very much, she's fired up. She's fueled by, you know, a lot of energy and rage and obvious, obviously personal passion, you know, surrounding the, the conflict at hand. And yes, he has taken very much just like a politically correct stance, you know, not wanting to do anything too extreme, you know, not wanting to involve unnecessarily wage all-out war. Hard to get a read on him. Uh, this is interesting though that we're getting off on bad blood with him and uh, the Avatar, you know. You know, Korra kind of uh, threw it back in his face there, like, you're just worried about photo ops. Meanwhile, I'm trying to actually do things, you know, is he too neutral? Does he play things too safe? Is that preventing him from ever doing anything, you know, meaningful, perhaps, you know? Especially now that they're having an electoral system, uh, you know, there's the, the council has been uh, dissolved and they're just appointing, you know, elected officials now. I guess that does establish a different uh, political climate in which people do have to act in public favor and constantly constantly aware that their their job is on the line with one vote so I'm curious if this is an accurate depiction of him that we're getting uh, if that will be something that we explore more going forward this season you know who he really is as a character if if he's really someone to be worried about or if we're kind of only just being kind of only seeing him through the same lens the same perspective as Korra. Okay, here we go. Episode 6, The Sting. Are we not gonna address Korra being gobbled up by spirit at all? Oh, hello! Whoa, what? That's the port. Is that the other main portal? Father said he would meet us at this location. 
Oh, what the frick? Oh, uh, what? Are you just in the You can't go in there! That's why the stairs are so mad! He's freaking just going in there willy-nilly, what the frick? That outfit. <laughs> I don't know why, but that reminded me of like Monty Python for some reason. I don't know why. With these movers, we'll have the support of the people. President to lend his troops to the war effort. Will this be the end of Knock Talk? Find out next week on. We got some major chemistry on screen. On screen. Oh my god. Barrick, another one of your ships has been captured. Oh. <laughs> I guess Cora's just gonna be in that belly of the beast for a hot minute. I don't think we're gonna visit her in this episode. They kept those things? They didn't uh, destroy all those? Oh my god. Dang, that stinks. You tried, Mako, you tried. We've been double crossed. We have to get off this ship. Uh. Oh! Ah! Ah! <laughs> I felt that. <laughs> Oh shoot. Yeah, from what? Oh. Oh. Frick. Everything I had was in here. I can figure this out. Just stop. I'm not giving up on you. Uh, I knew this was going to happen. Uh, it's, it's, it's okay. I'm going to find out who did this. <laughs> Here, check it out. 
<gasps> no frick! Gosh. Ah, just when Varric was like growing on me a little bit because they introduced him at first to be this like goofy guy but then when he kind of like stepped up to help out the kids and everything I was like you know what he's not that bad but frick bait and switch of the century whoa should have known though guy that rich he's got to be corrupt <laughs> but what would he why I don't understand he sabotaged all of his own ships is the answer obvious and I'm just too stupid to figure it out? He's probably in on things with Unalak. He was the one who started chirping in everybody's ear the first rumblings of a civil war when Cora's dad was trying to keep everybody calm, keep everyone civilized, not raise tensions. And Varric was like the initiator. He was like, no, let's, let's start a civil war. Let's retaliate. Probably was working with Unalak the whole time because then he evaded arrest now was that coincidence or was that planned you know like he was the first one to start planting the seeds chirping if Unalak's entire plan was to frame Korra's father frame his brother to arrest him all along and just completely eliminate him that was he was the biggest obstacle for him so if that was his game plan all along was to just completely eliminate him get him out of the way get him just out of town on a ship get him out of dodge then yeah who's to say he wasn't bribing an already money hungry dude like Varric to go in plant the seeds of rebellion and to do it especially in Korra's parents household you know I wouldn't be surprised because a guy that rich like what does he care he probably wouldn't have been too impacted you know if there was a true invasion or whatnot I don't know maybe I'm wrong because mm. part of me also doesn't think Varric's that smart but maybe that's all a ruse maybe that's like an act as well my brain I'm like racking my brain trying to figure out what his logic or reasoning would be other than I think it just boils down to if you show him money he's clearly money driven if you flash him cash I think you know he'll do anything he doesn't seem to necessarily care too much uh, about anyone's interests but his own and it's a similar kind of tactic as you know what Udalog was doing in the trial with Cora's parents and everything, you know, making, arresting them, making it look like they were gonna go to jail for the rest of their lives and then stepping in at the last second when all hope seemed lost to beg for their mercy and then it frames him in a good light. He looks merciful, you know, like similar tactic here if Varric is behind all of this, if he's truly behind all of these attacks with his ships, with the future industries, equipment and everything, all of these shipments, you know, just in time, right as all hope seems lost and all of Asami's, you know, her warehouse house all of her inventory is completely gone ransacked who's who's gonna step in oh at the last second you know painting himself in a better light so they're kind of operating on similar similar like uh, manipulative tactics there so I do feel really bad for Sami. I feel like she's barely really actually been involved so far this season, frankly. So uh, I'm glad that we got a little bit more uh, with her this episode. And I can't deny it kind of is interesting. You know, she and Mako, I think, work really well together and they vibe well. And, you know, Mako and Korra pretty much the entirety of the season have not. <laughs> you know, it's kind of been just like a ticking, like, all right, when's the pot going to boil over and when are they going to break up? You know, it kind of was a little predictable based on their 
interactions, it seems like they barely, barely vibed well together um, as a couple, that is. You know, I think they operated way better as friends, just friends. I can't deny, you know, seeing Mako at it with Asami again. I don't know, maybe I was just excited to see some more of her because I do feel real bad for her this season. Like, she's kind of lost everything and now here she is at her most vulnerable point getting roped in by, you know, Varric can totally, he's totally taken advantage of that, totally exploiting that uh, for his own, whatever he gets out of this, you know. He's in a position unlike anybody else, you know, he's, he's so unaffected, so like, why would he care? So yeah, I can't deny that it was just an interesting contrast to see, you know, Korra and Mako butting heads so much this season and then seeing him back in action with Asami, you know, they, they, they do make a good team. They work well together. I can't deny. But yeah, I can't believe this is where it's ending off. I, I want to keep watching. I am going to keep watching, obviously, because what is going to happen? The, the one thing about the writing, again, this was consistent with season one now and then it's just playing out again. I can't believe I'm even surprised still at this rate because that's just a testament to, again, you know, a common thread of the just phenomenal writing of season one was that all of these other things, all these people who you weren't necessarily assuming would be so entrenched in this, you know, we're getting blindsided like at every corner here. There's always a little surprise in store, so I can't believe I'm like so shocked <laughs> but so yes definitely looking forward to catching the next three episodes after this we're halfway through we are halfway through the season here book two thank you guys so very much for watching i do appreciate it uh, definitely excited i feel like things are really ramping up here setting us up for what I think is going to be a really, really interesting arc coming forward and just the finale, how this is all going to come together. But until then, I hope you guys are doing so well as always, and I will see you guys again very, very soon. Bye, guys.